God. We've been doing a series where we've been looking at uh, some of the imperfections uh, that are present in the lives of the first family of our faith, the, the patriarchs of our faith. We, we've looked at the dysfunction that was present in the life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their sons. And now we're seeing some more imperfections. We're seeing some more dysfunction, again, in, in people who were prominent uh, while, again, the faith tradition is being formed. And again, it's very much being formed. Moses, again, in Exodus chapter 32, has, has been up on the mountain uh, with God receiving instruction. And so at the very beginning, we got this major dysfunction, but let's dig into it here. Exodus 32, we're going to see how amazing God's grace is. And I hope it blesses you. I hope it blesses you. Because if, if perfection is a qualification uh, for serving and being used by God, then all of us would be disqualified. If doing everything right all the time um, were a prerequisite uh, for serving God, um, we will be disqualified um, because we've all fallen short of his glory. And so here, Exodus 32, I'm just going to read beginning of verse 1. It says, now when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him, come, make us gods. Listen to that now people coming to Aaron after all that God has done. Again, let's contextualize this. After all that God has just done in Egypt, 10 plagues, allowing them to leave Egypt with the wealth of Egypt on their backs, allowing them to cross over a Red Sea that parted for them to cross over on dry land. After watching Pharaoh and his army be drowned in the Red Sea. Again, after experiencing all of the plagues and God setting them free. Moses goes up on the mountain to, to meet with God. And this is what they do the moment Moses doesn't come down off of the mountain as soon as he thinks they sh he should have come down off of the mountain. They yeah. gather together to Aaron and say to him, Come make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt. So they're saying it. That this is going to be important. That out of their own mouths, as for Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. But people will switch on you quick. With a quickness, they'll move on, even while you're still in the picture. Let's, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. And Aaron said to them, break off the golden earrings which are in your ears for your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. You, you know this, this part of the story for sure. So all the people broke off their golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand, and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. You know this. He, he took the gold. He, he turned it into a, a calf. Now listen here. Then they said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Now just, again, just a few verses up ahead, again, the first verse of this chapter, they, they recognized that it was Moses who led them out of Egypt. But here, here in verse 4, at the end, they say, this is your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. This, 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 this picture of people so willingly lining up with a lie is really is fascinating to me, right? Especially in light of all of the lies that our country has been bombarded with and, and all of the people who so readily embrace the lie. They know it's a lie, right? Uh, uh, the leaders in, in the political party uh, that I don't have to mention 
uh, who are promoting the lie know that the lie is a lie. The people who are embracing the lie, hear me, they know that the lie is a lie, and yet they willingly line up with the lie. But the word of God makes it clear that, that a lie has a short lifespan. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that a lie cannot live, and it cannot. It's, it's only a matter of time before every lie comes crashing to the ground. But this is just a fascinating phenomenon to me. These people know what the truth is. They communicated what the truth is in verse 1. But by the time we get to verse 4, they have flipped. And they have made a decision, right, to embrace this lie. They've gone from recognizing the truth that it was Moses that God used to lead them out of Egypt to now embracing this lie that this calf that, that hadn't even been fashioned <clears throat> until that very moment was actually responsible and was to receive the credit for leading them out of, of Israel. But we're talking about some major uh, dysfunction here. Verse, verse 5, and Aaron is who I really want to deal with today. I mean, we, we see by looking at the people that, that they need grace, just like we need grace. I'm, I'm not going to read all of this chapter today, but in this chapter, you probably know this story. God was infuriated, and, and in light of what God saw, God was ready to wipe them off of the face of the earth. He was, he was ready to, to, he used water uh, in Noah's time. He was ready to use fire right here, and, and fortunately, Moses was there, and he was able to get God to change his mind. And thank God for Moses. God sat there and told Moses, you know what? I'm going to burn these people off of the face of the earth. And I'm going to build, I'm going to make you a great nation. And Moses passed up all of that glory. He said, no, don't give them another chance. Give them another chance. Don't, don't give the enemies uh, of your people, the, the, the enemies of you, an opportunity to say that, that you failed your people. <clears throat> And so Moses literally interceded and changed God's mind. That's, that ought to provide a word of hope for somebody. Somebody needs God to change his mind about a situation in your life. And, and the, 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 the right prayer at the right time, uh, the right intervention, <coughs> uh, the right uh, intercessory prayer warrior, yeah, can get the attention of God and stand in the gap for you and get God to change his mind about you. Somebody ought to celebrate that word right there, but that's, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm going to get to this conversation about Aaron. Uh, again, verse 5, Aaron says, so when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before. So Aaron has just fashioned this, this calf with his own hands. He saw the response of the people ready to put this, this false god that had been fashioned with the man's hands out before them. And so when he saw that, he took it a step further and built an altar to put before it and made a proclamation, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Then they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offerings and brought priest offerings and, and, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. My God. Again, Aaron. Again, Aaron did this. Aaron, again, who was Moses' right hand. Let me say this about Aaron uh, that's, that's not altogether uh, clear just in this, this 32nd verse. We have to go back a few verses. When we go back a few verses, in, I mean, I'm sorry, a few chapters in Exodus, we we begin to see some things. Let me let me go back. We see um, beginning in um, in chapter twenty five. Okay, in chapter twenty five, while God is speaking to Moses on the top of the mountain, God has very specific plans for the gold that 
the Israelites possessed, the gold that they took um, from Egypt because God ordained it to be. So God called their enemies to give them the wealth of the land. And so they left out wealthy. They didn't know what to do with the money, right? It's dangerous for people to get money and they don't know what to do with the money. A lot of people win the lottery, wind up broke because they don't know what to do with the money. A lot of professional athletes, I think they're getting a lot better now because they're learning from the mistakes of those who preceded them. But a lot of professional athletes wind up broke because they don't know what to do with the money. And, and this is what Israel's dealing with. They don't know what to do with the money. They haven't waited to get God's instruction. And so they took from this gold and they gave it to Aaron for him to use it. So God, we, but we see here in verse 25 that God had a plan for that gold. I'm not going to get into the details of it, but that gold uh, was, was purposed and planned to be used by God uh, to, to decorate uh, the tabernacle of worship and, and to, to decorate all of the utensils and the altars and everything that will be used in the tabernacle. God had a plan for it. And, and I want to say that because that's significant for us. You may not know what God's plan is, but you need to be patient enough to seek God's face out, to find out what his plan is for you and everything that you have. You need to find out. Just because you don't know what the plan is does not mean that God does not have a plan. The children of Israel did not know God's plan. Moses was on the mountain receiving God's plan. He had not communicated the plan to them yet, but they got ahead of God. They were impatient, and they got ahead of God, and they were, they were content to... Uh, build their own God. Yeah, they were they were really just following the example that they had seen in Egypt uh, because Egypt did that. They they made uh, idols. Uh, they made their own gods. And so they're just repeating what they had seen done before and what they had seen culture surrounding them do. And I want to encourage you to be patient. God has a plan. Somebody put that in the comment section. Can you do that? Can you help us out with that? God has a plan. God has a plan for you. Even if you don't know what it is yet, you need to be patient until it becomes clear or and or you need to seek his face so you can find out what it is. Uh, so he had a plan for the goal. Uh, we see that in, in Exodus uh, chapter 20, <clears throat> 26. Uh, he had a plan for the altars. He had a plan. He had a plan. Once we get to verse 20, chapter 29 in Exodus, we see that he had a plan for Aaron. Aaron didn't know what his plan was. But God's plan for Aaron, we see here in chapter 29 of Exodus, is for Aaron to be the high priest. Again, Aaron doesn't know what God's plans are. He's, he's oblivious to what God has as up his sleeve for him. Um and, and even when we get to, to chapter 31 in Exodus, just before, we see that God even had a plan uh, for the skilled artisans amongst the children of, of Israel. And again, the artisans would have been the people who know how to build and create things, again, with the wisdom of God. We, we've learned that that wisdom is what enables us to create and make something out of nothing, something that is sustainable, something that is workable, uh, something that is usable. And, and so the artisans were the people who knew how to work with wood. They knew how to build. They, they were carpenters, but they were also those who, who knew how to take gold and, and turn it into a, a fork and a spoon or, or a bowl or, or, or a ring. They, they knew how to work with their hands and create things. They were gifted by God to do that. And as we look at Aaron, we not only see that, that God had plans for Aaron to be the high priest. Again, he didn't know what God's plans were. But we also see that, that Aaron was even one of these gifted artisans because he took the gold and he had the skill uh, to do something with it. And so we see as we look at Aaron that Aaron, again, was dysfunctional. We see that the children of Israel are dysfunctional. And we see that Aaron, and again, I, I really want to focus in on Aaron today, y'all. We see that Aaron used his position and his skill for the wrong purposes. We've got to be careful about this in the body of Christ. we got to be careful about this in the church, whether you're called to be a, a prophet, 
or you're called to be uh, an apostle or you're called to be a pastor or, or a teacher or an evangelist or whether you're called to be a, a ministry leader on some other level uh, in the life of your church, provide leadership for the stewardship team and for, for elders and deacons and things like that, whether you're, you're, you're leading in, in worship ministries or music ministries or the media ministry, you have to be sure that you don't allow yourself to fall in the same way that Aaron fell. Uh, he used his position and his skill for the wrong purposes. And, and, and right here, again, it can be confusing. The lines can get blurred. It was confusing for Aaron. The lines were blurred for Aaron, again, in the absence of his covering, in the absence of, of direct revelation from God, he found himself operating outside of the purposes of God for his life. And so it's important, people of God, for us to be patient, for us to not get out ahead of God, for us to understand the importance of godly covering, the importance of hearing from God before we make any major move. Again, Aaron messed up because he did not get his vision from God. Let me, let me park right there for a moment. He did not get his vision from God. He messed up because he allowed his vision to come from the people. Some of y'all not going to like that. Y'all not going to like that. But I want to encourage you today that your vision has got to come from the right place. If your vision is not coming from God, if God has not helped you to see what your next step is to be, if God has not helped you to see what the call on your life is and how you are to be used in ministry, you need to hit the pause button and you need to be patient and make sure that you don't do anything before you hear from God. Somebody is listening to this word right now, whether it's live or later, this word is for you. You're ready to move forward into some stuff that looks good and it, and it sounds good and people are getting you all pumped up. They're filling your head and you're ready to move into something that God has not ordained for you. You're getting ready to move into something that is going to cause you to be outside of the purposes and plans for God in your life and it will lead to a fall and a failure like you've never seen before. That's right. I, I, you, you know who you are. You know who you, you know who you are. Amen. Um, again, as always, I thank you for your likes, your shares, and your prayers. You never know who, who needs that word. Again, if Aaron can be tripped up, then any of us uh, can be tripped up. Again, Aaron was right there with Moses the whole time. The whole time, he was right there for all 10 other plagues. He was right there. And, and he was so easily turned. They, they turned him on a dime. Amen. And they were all so willing and ready to embrace this lie on his life. Again, I want you to know God has plans for you. Be patient so that you don't get outside of God's plans for you. And again, the, the thing I want us to get, in addition to what has already been shared, again, is, is how amazing uh, the grace of God is. Right? Even after Aaron erred in the way, erred in the way that he did, God still forgave him, and God would still use him. Again, this is this is dysfunction uh, that God does not allow to get in the way of our destiny. That That is some amazing grace. You know, God hadn't allowed me to let go of this point yet because some of us need to get it. You, you've been beating yourself up for too long. Because you don't understand God. God has been misrepresented to you. And you don't recognize just how loving, how forgiving, how full of grace our God is. You don't know how much he desires for you to walk in your destiny. And he's not going to allow even some great big mistakes um, 
to discourage you and to distract you and get you off course. If you'll, if you'll just, if you'll just come back. If you'll come back, God says, forgive yourself. I've already forgiven you. Again, the first family of our faith <clears throat> was messed up. They were messed up. And so now here we have the first priest, the first high priest, Aaron. He was messed up. But God did not allow the mistakes of his past uh, to prevent him from walking in God's plan and purpose for his life. Somebody, somebody's got to embrace that. Somebody still needs that word. Somebody still needs that confirmation, that affirmation that God loves you. His grace is amazing. You've made some major mistakes. And, and, and perhaps other people, again, you can't get your vision for your life from other people. Your vision has got to come from God. There, there are people who have been speaking into your life that because of the mistake that you made, they said you have messed up too much for God to love you and for God to use you. The devil is a liar. Again, if, if perfection were a qualification for being used by God, all of us would be disqualified. If we have it, if we had to have it all together, uh, we would be all together disqualified because none of us have ever had it all together, nor will all of us ever have it all together. Stop beating yourself up. God embraces you for who you are. Now he's not going to leave you where you are. He wants to. He wants to work with you again. I, I found it ironic that, that just before God led us in this way, he had us dealing with the scripture that says God is perfecting that which concerns me. And he is. He is. God God is moving you and, and each and every one of us from pitiful to perfection. The reason God has to perfect that which concerns us is because we are less than perfect. The reason we need to learn how to count it all joy, understanding that the trying of our faith work is patience and patience performs a perfect work in us, making us perfect and complete, lacking nothing. The reason we have to understand that and embrace that reality is because we are less than perfect, but God is patient with us. He's patient as he perfects that which concerns us. He loves you. And, and your imperfections, your weaknesses only provide an opportunity for God to show himself strong. Again, God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. So stop be beating yourself up. Stop trying to act like you're perfect. I know you got stuff that nobody knows and, and you don't want anybody to know. And, and some of that stuff people probably don't need to know unless God leads you to share uh, a testimony, be a witness about his grace in your life as he leads you, but but be sure it's God, right? Be sure it's God. Um, but trust God. Trust God. Cast, cast all of that care upon him because he cares for you. This is critically important. God loves you. I don't know who, who needs to hear that word. God loves you just like you are. God is not like man. God is not somebody who's waiting for you to have it all together, who wants you to look like you have it all together before he will associate with you. No, 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 no. God, all throughout the word of God, has associated with imperfect people. Again, this is monumental. The first family of our faith was messed up. The first priest was messed up. He turned his back on God. He made the idol with his own hands. Then made an altar. Started operating like a priest. Had him going through all kind of worship rituals to a false handmade, man-made God. We don't make God. God made us. We don't create gods. God created us. We are the creation. We're, we're called to be co-creators, but, but we don't create. 
God, right? And so I, I thank God for those of you who have been listening today. I thank you for, for liking and for sharing this message. I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for your participation um, and for all of your comments. My God, God delights in you. And your dysfunction is not going to stop God from delighting in you. My God, I pray you get it. I pray you get it. I pray this word blesses you. God has plans for you. Somebody needs to put that in the comment section. God has plans for me. That's right. I do not have to be perfect. Somebody just needs to say that out loud. You need to confess that to yourself till you get it in your spirit. I do not have to be perfect. God loves me just like I am. Man. Thank you for joining me today on Kingdom Revelation Live, where revelation from the word of God will change your life. Somebody's going to be set free from the lie. Somebody's going to be set free from the bondage, from the guilt that you've been living under. You're going to be set free today because you walked in this word. You're set free now. The chains are falling right now. As you begin to see yourself, this is so important, the way God sees you. See, uh, in agreement with Jeremiah 29 and 11, you, you need to understand that God has thoughts toward you. And you need to know what are God's thoughts thoughts toward you not not what you've heard not not the thoughts that the enemy uh, has planted in your mind you need to know God's thoughts toward you God's thoughts toward you don't start with your mistakes and your failures and your problems no he loves you he has plans for you plans to prosper you plans to bring about a future and a hope that's what God has for you. His grace is simply amazing. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you for your seeds. Thank you for being a blessing. If this word blesses you, it will surely be a blessing to someone else. God bless you.